Coach, just in a general sense, since, since the last time we talked, how's it gone? You know, for the guys, I know if you've covered, it takes more time to maybe work with them, but how's it going overall? You know, I think if you talk to any coach in the country, they'll probably say we have really good days and we have some really bad days, and it, you know, it's uh, and one of my keys or our, to our ahead of time, one of my keys is that we have to have consistency and we got to have dependability. We we knew last year what we, you know, the guys you had back and who was going to be there every day. And, and that that's that's what we've really talked about, consistency, efficiency, and dependability uh, with those guys. And you got experienced guys back that have played, five guys that played, you know, good minutes in Elite Eight in a Big 12 championship team. But now, as everyone knows, their roles are different. And now can they be consistent and can they be dependable? And, and, and that's the key, I think, for our season. But it, they, they work very hard. Um, you know, I, I would say out of – this is uh, number 15 today. Um, out of 15, there was probably one where you were really disappointed that they just didn't have the energy. But that's expected. That's everybody, and it's a long stretch. And, you know, we've talked this, – this middle part until we get to that first exhibition – Probably is the toughest stretch. That first first ten, you're excited. You got get going. Then it's kind of oh, the dog days in that middle, and then obviously you get two exhibitions and then a game right around the corner. Um, so it helps you kind of get refreshed, ready for that. So, but I, I, you know, I've been pleased with the guys, and um, I, I really believe the older guys have set a great example. They've the good leadership, and and help create. You know, we talk about it a culture of effort, and and they've had those other guys playing their butts off. So that which is really important for you know continuing to make progress and keep the culture that we developed. I think, you know, efficiency is very important because you just kind of alluded to it with those stats. And, and it's something that, uh, you know, we have brought up with them. Obviously, the turnovers, you know, it's some of it he got double teamed because people knew him a little more, um, you know, and then he, he didn't deal with that very well. Um, you know, he wanted to do more himself, which, you know, now he put himself maybe in some binds. So it's that for him, that fine line of figuring out when to go, when not to go. And, and he's got to really work at getting open shots because he can shoot. His field goal percentage in history, you know, is, is evident of that. And, you know, if we can get him figure out how to get open shots, he'll make them. Uh, but the other part is just, to me, the best – game as the last game last year you know when he he had to he had a double double and that that rebounding has got to be there um you know he he can make a name for himself if he goes and block shots rebound things that no one else likes to do but if he can do those things it's it's going to help him and it's going to help us Well, he's got to get stronger, and he knows it. it I don't know. Um, you know, Barry Brown was very, very motivated when he got here and, uh, you know, got after it every day. Dejuan has got that same mold. I mean, he loves it. He, he, he texts me in the middle of the night, what about this? He'll send me videos of plays from practice. What should I have done? Um you know he, but the the strength, the physicality, and uh, is is he's going to have to endure that. He's got to really do a good job taking care of his body, so that he can be productive not only here but at the end of the season. Um, you know he he's he's got the he does some of those intangibles, tip dunks, um, you know steals, all all those little things. He just kind of does it instinctively, and you know it, it's it's something you can't teach and. So, so if he's going to do those things, he's got to keep his body. He's got to get stronger, and he can't get tired. And, and he's gone through that already. If you talk to him, I'm sure he'll tell you that uh, this is hard, and, and, and he's got to adjust to it, and uh, he's got to keep making progress with that part of it. Well, I think probably the nicest surprise, and and I th I believe I told you guys this summer, Levi had made really nice strides, then he got hurt, 
he sat for about a month or so, and then it took him a little while. But this this last stretch of practice, uh, he's done a lot of nice things. I, we just looked at it. He's our our leading rebounder in the, in the last two weeks. Um, he's our second leading scorer in practice in the last last week. So he's he's done a ni- lot of nice things for us. Um, so that gives you a, a little hope, a little bit of more depth. Whether you play two bigs at times with Mac and him, or that gives you a backup, you know, you know, at the five for for, uh, you know, if you start Mac at that five, the the two young guys um, play their butts off. Uh, they're not perfect by any means. Uh, I think they complement each other. Um, you know, each one of them has their own strength, and Antonio and Monte. Uh, you know, so they're they're gonna get they're gonna get some minutes. There's no doubt. We might have to grow a little bit and learn and and have some setbacks because they are young. Um, and then at other times we can go we can go small ball. And you know, we've had a bunch of the NBA people coming through. And I was talking to the Clippers last week and uh, you know asking about Rodney. And you know, when you look at their roster, it's it's very guard heavy and and wing heavy. And they just said, "Hey, we're playing. We're going small ball. We're we're playing Leonard and George at the three and four, and then we got our other our one and twos, and we're going to play one big. So you know that's the way basketball is now. You know now our can our guys, you know, can we do a good job with that and use that at times to give us a different weapon and a different strength." Yeah, I don't know. You know, I think he's got the ability. He's started to make some stride. Again, somebody that sat out the whole summer, he's had to catch up physically, conditioning-wise. Uh, defensively is his biggest setback, but a great passer, which, you you know, when you, you know, a lot of stats aren't transferable from high school to college or junior college, but but one thing that usually is is assists and rebounds. And, and he's, you know, you know, led the nation in assists. Uh, he passes the ball. Little forces it sometimes. We've had too many turnovers, but he's he's probably one of our leading assist guys in this in this first stretch. Got to get better on defense. But there's a there's a chance that he again it gives you another look. He's going to play. There's no doubt. But you know you can play him and Cardi. You know X. You can you know he could come off the bench and and just a lot of different looks. And the thing we like and we talked about as the staff this morning. Uh, we when we move the basketball, we we can score, and and we got some guys that are willing passers, so that really that's been very positive here in the early stretch of practice. Ah, he's got uh, one of the NBA guys said yesterday, "Who's going to score for you?" And you know he's got to, and you know he and he's capable. Um, it's just to me, it's consistent. You know he's had his days. You know, he doesn't practice guys for four weeks. We put him in an Iowa State, and he, what do you get, 15, 16 points in the, in the Big 12 tournament. So he's capable of it. Now it's, uh, can he do it consistently? And, you know, he's going to have to, you know, if we're going to be successful, it's got to be 12 to 16 every day. And then he can have his, you know, big games in that stretch. But he, he, he's capable of scoring in a lot of ways. He he just got to learn not to try to go every time and rely on his teammates. Sometimes he's got to he's got to create, but sometimes it's got to be for others. Sometimes it's got to be for himself. I've been really happy with his progress the last uh, I would say seven or eight days. Uh, I think he was overdoing it early, um, you know, trying to do too much, and now he's kind of figured out. You know, I got other guys I can pass it, I can create for them. Um, it's hard to stay in front of them, and and you know if we we can use that in a lot of different ways. Yeah, he has. He really has. I think he's starting to feel more comfortable himself. He realized that he has to do it. Um, it has not been an easy spring, summer, fall for him. There's a you know one, I, and I talked with you guys before. I think this summer, you know the the stress, the pressure he went through. You know, going through all the workouts, making that decision, you could see he was mentally drained when he got here at the start of summer. But even now, at the, it, it's hard for seniors at, to, this is it. What you know, and, and I keep emphasizing to all our guys, and especially the older guys, 
worry about today. Worry about what you can control today, the process. You can't worry about the future. You don't know what's going to happen. And, um, you know, I'm trying to, and I've said it to you guys, I want him to smile. I want him to be happy. If he's happy talking, enjoying it, uh, you know, I think he can be a, a very good player and one of the better players in the league. Oh, I don't. I hope he doesn't have pressure. His pressure comes from within. He's so driven. I mean, he did what I talked about before. This is this is a dude that's sending me video as a freshman from workouts and practice. I mean, that's he wants to do well. He comes in the office. We're trying to get him consistently after class to come and eat because he's not a he. You know, he's not a great eater. He just never had that opportunity. Um, so you know, he he's driven. I would say consistently give us you know 20 to 22 minutes where he's he's going to be a stat filler he's going to have steals he's going to have deflections he's going to have some rebounds and, and probably his thing that he's made the most strides at is his three-point shooting I think he might be our leading three-point shooter in our practices percentage-wise now he isn't shoot as, as you know as many as some of the other guys but he's been pretty good consistent so you know, be a stat stuffer, you know, do all those things, make, you know, go three for four from the field. One of them is a tip in dunk, one's a layup, and then you make a three, you know, and, and if he can do all those things, it's going to help us. Bruce, got a couple questions for you. The first one, with so much talent coming out of like uh, big um, circuit tournaments and AAU events, how much emphasis does your coaching staff put into those? And then second off, how important is it to still build connection with high school coaches? Um, and how has that changed since you started? Well, it's changed drastically in, in my, this is, uh, you know, I'm 40 years and, you know, before when I started and it's hard for young guys to imagine, there was no AU. That's, you know, and, and the young guys that grew up in it, played in it, now they, you know, they're, they're recruiting to it. That's, that's all they know. Um, I think the NCAA this summer, the goal was to start making a little bit of change to go back with the academies, with the high school events in the summer. Uh, I was surprised I was on a teleconference with um, a group of coaches. They, the NABC, our coaches association, did some teleconference, just get feedback from the summer. I was surprised how much the young guys liked the high school events because they were the ones that were fighting it. And they, even my guys, they are like, why are we doing this, coach? And then, man, it's really cool to see them with their high school teams and see their coaches and all this like that was really good weekend coach and so it 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 was that I think that was positive um obviously AU the the mass numbers you can see a lot more people see them against better players uh you know I I I hope we can get a little bit of mixture of both I think that's the goal of uh of the NCAA the academy I I they, you know, and a lot of they got a lot of negative publicity because they didn't get the top players. And hopefully, we can work with AU. We can work with uh, the shoe companies, and and the academies could be a very positive thing because we had college coaches Tim Miles and Steve Lavin and uh, Gary Waters and all these guys working it in Division Two head coaches, and and that coaching and the influence and the the. Uh, knowledge that they can wisdom they can give these kids i think it'd be very helpful so i i you know change is hard and you know it's not going to just come overnight i know the ncaa is committed to a three four year plan to see if we can if these things can be a more valuable tool and and help um you know help us with recruiting and help the state of the game also i think is is really important and obviously the influence of certain you know elements in the game that you know cause uh, predicaments in recruiting the players seem to bring this up every year so it's not a big surprise they did again but you talked about maybe playing a little bit faster this year just with the lineup that you guys have is that a real possibility that you guys do that and run? well i think it's 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 important and in you know i it's it's funny when you recruit kids oh we want a fast break you know but then they get here and they man running is hard you know getting up and down is hard and and I I keep telling our guys right now our biggest problem is turnovers and you know it's probably around the country if you go to coaches you know trying to do too much going too fast not and we got mixed groups every day I mix the groups I don't just put Cardi Xavier Mac and those guys together every day I want good competition and practice 
And, and you know, and that causes pro- some of the turnovers. But, you know, one, I want to push it because I think we have athleticism. I think we have, I said, willing passers. We got, you know, we should have guys that should be able to get out on the break. Uh, you know, when Mac runs, he's as good as anyone, big guy beating people down the court. You know, but now we got to see him. We got to deliver so he wants to run every time. And then he's got to be in condition to do it every time. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something our coaches feel is important, but they, if the players want to do it, they got to do it. That means conditioning wise, that means do it every time, not just when they want. And then they got to take care of the ball. And, and that, you know, otherwise I can't. I can't. We can't have 30 turnovers. We're not winning. And, and it's just, uh, you know, we don't have that old team and that dominant team that we can overcome that. So um, I would, you know, I would love to do it. And I think we got to, one of the emphasis I put is we have to find ways to steal baskets. You can steal baskets off a transition, off your defense. And that's going to help when you talk about scoring. That's going to be important for us to get those extra baskets off of some of those, those little plays. Efficiency and consistency. You know, he, 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 and you guys know, you've watched, he's had great moments. You know, this is a, this a dude that scored 20 something in a Sweet 16 game against Kentucky, you know, in a high, high profile game when everyone's watching. And he's had his other, you know, shiny moments. But, you know, and you want those moments, but you got to have the consistency, especially for a team. Um, and we got it. He and he can. He's got it. You know, he's got to make his open threes, and we got to help get those threes. But he can again steal baskets. Go get a putback or two a game. He's so athletic. Go get a run out dunk. Get it. You know, we set little plays up for him. Post them up. Whatever it might be. Uh, you know, just score in a lot of ways. Just it just doesn't have to be one thing. So, you know that that efficiency and being versatile should be his strength. totally different people i mean we knew ahead of time austin's we knew he could rebound but we you know his immaturity uh preparation things like that david's totally opposite and this this is a young man that if you go back and look at a, he you know great point was in the threes it had a one of the high probably one of the highest test scores of our guys but he went to a prep school and they did not count anything the ncaa did not count any of his course so that's why he ended up at a junior college. So, and then when you got a kid that cerebral, you know, has that basketball IQ, IQ and understands how to get it to people and pass the ball, um, you know, so it, it, that part's different. And now is, you know, playing defense is a lot harder. You know, uh, playing without the basketball is a lot harder for him. Those are things that, uh, you know, he has to grow and learn for, but, but he'll, you know, he wants to, um, it's hard, it's hard for him. And especially coach Lowry's all over him every day about defense and not taking plays off. And, you know, you just can't do that. And, uh, and, and he's catching up on his conditioning. It, we did a little, when you talk about playing fast, I play a game, it's 15 second shot clock game and they go for four straight minutes and they can't stop. And, you know, David and Dejuan, a couple of those guys were like, you know, they told me they wanted to play fast, but they were trying to walk the ball up and the shot clock's going off. So it's just, uh, you know, that it's they got to get in that shape and condition to do some of those things. Oh, I don't think there's a number. I just want open ones. He can make open shots. He you know he's he's got to find ways to get open shots if they're if he I just don't want him to force things he's got to let the game come um you know and I and again I even last year I I never said don't shoot threes now Dean was out there and we had four guys on the perimeter so it was hard for him uh you know to get some of those looks um uh, and this year it'll be a you know I hope a little bit different for him and then we got to set him up to get some some opportunities where Every we have every team has plays that are they're geared for Leonard or they're geared for you know whatever pro might you know LeBron or whoever it might be. Same thing with us. We have we got to find some options to help Xavier get shots. Cardi Mac, 
and you know go to plays where we know we can get baskets from them in those in those situations. How different or or not different have you guys been received on the recruiting trail in the last three four years? Maybe since compared to when like you know the Barry Dean Cam class came in to now, like how kids are receiving? I would say we definitely have gotten you know it's better reception, better attention. Um, but at the same time, the the key to me is finding guys we can get, and and you know obviously we've had some success. I can't talk about guys, but you know before you know if you were top fifty, we weren't even in the you know we didn't, they wouldn't even answer your call. You know fifty to one hundred fifty had to be a special situation, and then you know we had to find the other guys. Where now we're it, you know that kind of that middle group. You know we at least they're listening to us, talking to us. They you know made you know, made visits or whatever it might be. So it, it's helped. There's there's no no doubt about it. And, um, you know, I'm happy with the coaches. And, you know, but I told Kels the other day, we had a kid out of Kansas City. I said, who won the Big 12 last year? And I gave him three guesses and none of them were us. And he still doesn't know. So somebody's not doing their job in Kansas City, I would say. So... <laughs> I just want to know who the third guest was. I can understand the first two, but uh, Bruce, the, the preseason All Big Twelve team came out today and said your seat wasn't on it. Just what was your reaction to? The I think he's on a venture first team. I don't know what you know. He, you know, I'm again consistency. He can be on there. You know, he, if he, he's got to have a great year, and you know the, um, you know Halliburton. I think because of what he did this summer, I told Steve, you know, can I help them get become a potential draft choice on the USA team? So can I be his agent too? So he's, you know, he's up there, you know, it, there's some, obviously, did he dominate last year? No, but he had a great summer. He got some national attention. Um, you know, it's the same with all those guys, you know, who, what program they're from, what attention they got, you know, it's, it's up to Xavier. He. He potentially can be there, but he's got to do it. I I really believe, and I I said it to you guys at the end of the year. I kicked myself. I told a couple of NBA guys, um, I really pub Barry to be defensive player of the year, and I probably talked too much about Barry, you know, being the best defender. Xavier is, if not the best in the league, he's definitely up there. And and I'm and I'm talking about in the country, and in some ways, he's better than Barry. Barry was so good on the steals and stuff. Xavier can just lock you down, and he's physically. I mean, I don't know how many times Dejuan's run into him and fell in practice. I mean, it's twice a twice a practice at least every day, and uh, you know he can guard the point, and he and he's guarded force, one, two, three, four. He can guard all the positions, and you know for his future, I I hope he understands that this is a a valuable tool that that could help him, you know, make some money in his career. Um, you know, I, I love both of the kids. They were great kids, great leaders, and we want, really wanted to win. And, uh, you know, dealing with some of the young high school guys, and, you know, I, Isaac, a couple times he grabbed me and, and say, we're okay, coach, don't get mad. We're okay. Just So I love his leadership, his toughness. I, you know, he and he had some great games last year. I, You know, I, I – we talked to him a lot about shooting, and and you know I want him to do well. I you know not against us, but um, and Isaac or Tyrese uh, Halliburton, just unbelievable person, family kid, and his numbers were astronomical for us this summer. So um, you know it, you're happy that you know you were part of their life, and you hope they have a great future. But obviously, when we're playing them, I hope they miss every shot. So. <laughs> Antonio's very talented. He has very good length. Um, uh, you know, he can really shoot the basketball. Uh, one of the problems, he's and he's figuring it out, he can't shoot every time he touches it, like in high school, try to make plays every time. Uh, you know, yesterday, I, I don't know what he was from three, at least, you know, maybe four for five, five for six. He can make shots. You know, it gives you a little bit of what Dean did, spread in the defense. Um, Montavious probably a... a you know, not quite as tall, a little tougher, a little more physical. 
uh, good passer, uh, probably has picked up things a little quicker, um, uh, you know, so that part of it. And so they, they give you a nice look. I, you know, both of them for their future, obviously they, they want to play three man. They want to move, you know, become, you know, play the wings and stuff, which is in today's, I treat trying to kid tell kids, it's no difference it, who you guard and, you know, can you dribble and, and make a play or not? You know, that's what it comes down to. So, uh, uh, it, it, both of them have done some nice things, and you know, hopefully they're you know be give us enough this year to help us, and then I think they're going to be very good players down the road. And then Mike's been a guy that's always come up to the yeah. spark. I mean, yeah, he. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, he there was a stretch early in the practice, first five six days. He was playing as good as anybody in practice, and then now he can't just let shooting be his only thing. And he's got to find some other niche to help us. I think he, along with Xavier, can be our defensive stoppers. Um, Mac, I've always said, is one of the best defenders, big guys in the in the country. I still believe that. Um, and then Mike, somebody, you know, go get some rebounds, do some of that other stuff. And and if your shots aren't going in, it's okay. You still can be productive. Uh, keep the confidence. And and so I, I, he's worked very hard. Obviously, he had a setback with an injury. He made a quick recovery from it. I'm shocked how well he's done because um, he, I mean, he couldn't do anything because it was, you know, with his hand. So for for six, eight weeks there. So it's, uh, you know, it. I, I hope, you know, again, keep healthy and keep, if we have good depth, it's going to help us. It doesn't make it any less stressful this year. There's no, I mean, this is about our team. That's what, that's right now. It's about Xavier. It's about Mac. It's about Pearson. It's about Cardi, James. These are seniors. And, and this is, you know, these guys are all, you know, this is their, you know, I don't, you know, a couple of them can come back, but they're seniors. They, this is about them and they're changing their roles and their team. And that's the most important thing. And, um, you know, I've been in a long time. You, you know, we won the Big 12 last year, and that's great. But, you know, a month from now, if we're not winning games, everyone's like, what the heck's wrong? So, you know, this it's important. Every year is important. Every game is important. And that's what, you know, I want I want to have a great season this year. That's, that's to me, getting the NCAA again, give these guys that opportunity. Bruce, you, you mentioned the consistency with Xavier being so important. What conversations have you had with them about, I guess, mentally preparing for the load of being – I, I think my big thing with him, and I sat and talked with him last week, one, just enjoy every day, come to practice, make the most of it, keep getting better, keep being vocal. Think, you know, my whole thing is if you worry about everyone else, you worry about your team, it, it's a lot easier on yourself. You know, the one of the quotes I love, help other people reach their dreams and your dreams will be reached much easier. And, and you know, so it's, you know, that's what – I know he has dreams, he has goals, a senior year, a lot of stress. You, Where am I going to be next year? What's going to happen? But worry about all the other things you can control. And and that, to me, that's 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 got to be the key for him. Well, last time we were over to meet with you as a group, you mentioned that Levi and Xavier and Mike and, and Dave have had you know, various levels of injuries. I mean, where are you guys at right now? I, I mean, they're all in practice. Um, actually, Nigel's the only one out now. He has a little bit of a, uh, a tendon problem. And uh, so, uh, you know, those guys are all back. It, it I wouldn't tell you they're 100%. Um, you know, and, and everyone's had – they've all had their little – they twisted their foot, you know, got kneed in the, in the thigh, and now that hurt. You know, it's just – it's hard it, in these practice practice harder than games because you, you know, you are in there the whole time. It is physical. It's one drill to the next, and uh, but hopefully it's preparing them to be ready for games because it's we're we're right around the corner. It's uh, three weeks from yesterday that we have our opener, and uh, you know within what seven eight day eight days we got an exhibition game, and so it's. Uh, got to come quick and when games start coming they all get healthy that that always happens <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, you know, he's got to stay healthy. That's his whole thing. He's physical. He, he's actually smart. He knows what's going on. He's been here. You know, he just has never been able to have consistent practice. And even he was out first, I think it was the first week, eight days of practice this year. And now he's back. Now can he sustain and get two, three, four weeks of practice every day where, you know, that's how you build trust with the coaches. And, and you build confidence with yourself by what you do in practice on, on, a, on a daily basis. So he, he gives us physicality. He gives us uh, some, inte- some intelligence because he knows our system. Um, you know, so I hope, you know, we got to have depth, especially at the big guys. And, um, you know, that's, that's very important. We're going to need him. He's got, you know, he makes great. He'll have seven or eight great passes. He'll have seven or eight bad turnovers, and it's just, again, it's the same thing. And and uh, just kind of figuring out what he can do. He's he's strong. He can guard. Uh, you know, he he can do a lot of things. He, I mean, you saw last year pushing the basketball, creating, making plays. You know, we I stood put him in the game. Texas said, Cam can't play. You know, it just. And he, this is one of the best defensive teams in the country, and he's he's making plays for us. So, um, you know, he's capable. It's just he's he's got to be happy about himself and his role. I think that's that's not – you don't have to do something every time you touch the ball. Sometimes the best play is just swing it. And then, you know, now you might get it back. And so, you know, that, that's got to be a key for him to continue to make progress.